I want to give you guys my college football week two best bets. Last week, we went three and two. We're currently hitting 60% on the year. And we messed up because we took Colorado minus 10 against North Dakota State. That's a mistake. We took Houston minus two and a half against UNLV. And Houston turns out they're, they're just one of the worst power four teams in all of college football they got no QB no offensive line no defense no nothing so we learn from those mistakes and we're ready to make up for it we're aiming to go five and no this week we're taking Texas minus seven and a half on the road in the big house against Michigan I see this game playing out really similar to how Clemson versus Georgia did last week Michigan's defense is going to keep them in this game for the first couple of quarters Texas is a juggernaut offensively. They got a top 10 offensive line. They got a really good group of wide receivers. Quinn Ewers is a pretty good quarterback. And with Wayne Martindale being Michigan's defensive coordinator, having an NFL background, there's going to be a lot of advanced, exotic looks that Michigan is going to be throwing at Quinn Ewers and Steve Sarkeesian. And it's going to be tough for any offense to have success against Michigan's defense. You got Mason Graham. You have the you have Will Johnson at corner. Those are two of the best players at their respective positions going into next year's draft class. So Michigan definitely is going to have a stout defense in this game. But eventually, I expect Texas to pull away in the second half because I don't see Michigan's offense having too much success at all in this game. I mean, Donovan Edwards is on the cover of NCAA college football 25 and I don't know why because I mean this dude didn't look that good last year and this season he isn't even the best running back on the team and Michigan's run game isn't as dominant this year as what it was last year due to the new faces that they have on the offensive line and the only playmaker they have offensively right now is Colts and Loveland you got concerns at quarterback. I thought Alex Orgy was going to be the starter, but Davis Warren ended up getting the nod, and he looks mid at best. Michigan doesn't have the ability to play complimentary football like what they did last year due to how they're going to be handicapped with their quarterback position, and they don't have enough weapons in the passing game to have success to take advantage of a questionable Texas secondary. So I see Michigan losing 34 to 10 is my final score prediction for this game. The home field advantage definitely is going to play a little bit of a factor early, but Texas also went on the road and beat Alabama and Tuscaloosa. And it's way difficult to win in Tuscaloosa than it is in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Not trying to be disrespectful to Ann Arbor, not trying to be disrespectful to the big house, but Alabama has only lost about 10 or less games at home over the last decade or so. So if you can go on the road and beat Alabama and Tuscaloosa, most of that production from last year that was on that team for that win is still going to be playing in this game. Playing in a hostile environment is not going to be enough for a Texas not to cover. So I love minus seven and a half with Texas. I'm taking Alabama with the 31 and a half point spread against USF. USF is one of the better group of five schools out there, but Alabama, this is one of the best teams that Alabama has had in over the last four to five years, just off the fact that this is a complete team. In the past, Alabama hasn't been complete. Their offensive line hasn't been as good as what it is this year. As a matter of fact, Alabama's offensive line is the best this year that it's been in over five years. They have about two or three guys on this line who are NFL prospects. Your defense is going to be outstanding as well. And Jalen Milro looks a lot better this year than what he was last year. USF, I don't think that they end up getting blown out completely in the first half. I do think that it's going to take Alabama at least three quarters to cover that 31 and a half point spread. I don't see this being a halftime cover. I see them covering once we get late into the third quarter. USF, they have a pretty talented quarterback. They got a really good coaching staff. So it's not just going to be one of those affairs where you don't have to watch the game and 
not have to break a sweat because they're going to cover at halftime. Like Alabama probably is going to fight to cover that 31 and a half point spread for at least the first three quarters in this game. And once we get into the fourth quarter, that's when they really should be able to lock this thing up and they should be up by 40. That's when they put the backups in and hopefully the backups don't allow USF to backdoor cover. Another game that I really love is Colorado plus seven on the road against Nebraska. I know I told you guys after them not covering against North Dakota State last week that I was done betting money on Colorado, but it's hard for me to not bet on them this week with them being an underdog. Even if they do lose this game, Nebraska isn't good enough to completely dog walk Colorado, regardless if they're playing at home. You got to remember that. Last year, Colorado covered the spread in the majority of the games that they were underdogs in against UCLA, Oregon State. The only game they didn't cover where they were a massive underdog was against Oregon because Oregon was just outright better and that game was being played in Austin. Nebraska's home field advantage is definitely going to be a factor and it's going to be difficult for Colorado's offense to get going early. But at the same time, Nebraska has a true freshman quarterback out there in Dylan Raiola. And I think Dylan Raiola is going to have a great career. But when you're going up against a defense like Colorado's, that's a step up from UTEP, even though we have concerns about Colorado's defense, I don't see Dylan Raiola just picking apart Colorado's defense and going 21 to 23, four touchdowns and 300 passing yards. I don't think Colorado's defense is that trash to the point where a true freshman quarterback is just going to dissect them. And with their new defensive coordinator, he's way more aggressive when it comes to blitzing. So there's going to be some looks that Dylan Raiola is going to have to account for pre-snap. And normally when it comes to making pre-snap reads, being able to see what side the blitz is coming and being able to slide protections to that slide is really difficult. And you're asking a lot out of a true freshman to be able to pull that off. Nebraska isn't a good enough team where they're just going to roll over Colorado, especially with them having two of college football's best players and Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter. And Nebraska defensively is really good. But what makes Nebraska's defense have a little bit of concern against Colorado offensively is that Colorado has four NFL wide receivers. And it's hard to guard four NFL wideouts. Most teams don't even have two NFL corners, let alone three. So if you're Nebraska, even if you are able to get after Shadur Sanders like how you did in the first half of last year, Colorado's receivers are explosive enough that they can convert third and long situations, second and long situations. Like any play Colorado decides to drop back and pass, they're a threat to score a touchdown with the amount of talent and depth that they have at wide receiver. And if you're just going to overlook the talent that Colorado has at receiver, then you're just fucking biased. You, you got to stop being biased. If you're going to bet on these games, you need to be well informed about the opposing team that you're betting against. And you're being a little bit ignorant if you're just going to disregard how deep Colorado is at wideout. I mean, their wide receivers are really good. And four or five of those dudes are going to be playing on Sundays next year. So with that amount of talent and with you having Shadur Sanders, it does make things a little bit difficult for how you're going to game plan around that defensively because if you send extra guys all you want to one of these wide receivers is going to be open so even though I'm not confident Colorado is completely going to win this game I trust them enough to be able to cover Nebraska if they win it's going to be a one possession game Colorado has enough talent offensively to keep this being close, especially with how good Shadur Sanders is. Nebraska is going to be able to ground and pound them. I have no doubt about that. But Colorado's going to get theirs in this game. I'll probably take Colorado to win. I'm not confident about it, but I am confident that they cover the seven-point spread. And there's a chance that this line probably moves the Colorado plus eight and a half, Colorado minus nine and a half. If Colorado is a 10 point underdog, that's free money in my eyes. Next up, I got Penn State. I'm taking them 
minus 34 points against Bowling Green. They should cover this game by halftime. Bowling Green looked pretty good last week, but Penn State offensively looks way more dynamic with their new offensive coordinator. I'm not going to try to pronounce his name because it's a little bit tricky to pronounce, but with how good Penn State is defensively, and now with this offense being able to generate big plays downfield vertically, they should cover at halftime. This probably should be a 48-7 game final. And lastly, I got Ole Miss. I'm taking them minus 42 against Middle Tennessee State. My homeboy Ralph Mincy plays for the Blue Raiders, so shout out to him. Can't wait to see my boy ball out out there. But Ole Miss is just a juggernaut offensively. I mean, they got a good offensive line. They're deep at receiver. Jackson Dart should be a Heisman contender this year. And defensively, they got a lot of talent this year. And Ole Miss isn't going to get tested until a month from now when they finally get done playing this cupcake tune-up schedule. So Ole Miss should take care of business. They took care of business against Furman last week, and they should be able to handle Middle Tennessee State. So these are my college football week two bets. I feel extremely confident about these. I was extremely confident about the ones I had last week, but I didn't know that Houston was just going to be complete garbage. They ended up going back and forth playing musical chairs at quarterback. They got no defense. And Colorado, I don't love betting on them as a favorite, but I love taking them as an underdog. So I'm confident about these picks. Um, I wouldn't recommend parlaying all these because it's like if you parlay these, then you need all these to hit, even though I'm confident they will. But, you know, it's better off if you kind of bet these single and then, you know, you put in like a $10, 15 five leg. You know, last week I took all of these single. I had one parlay going, but Colorado messed that up. So I just ended up just taking them single and I was up pretty good. You know, 60%, you're still up in some profit if you take these. So these are my week two best bets. Leave your thoughts on the comment section down below.